Today we're going to go ahead and continue with our Activity 1.7, the Game Time app. We'll focus on programming both the start and reset button during this activity. So in your MIT App Inventor, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the block editor. And within that block editor, we're going to go ahead and drag out a button click event handler for the start button. So once we go over to MIT App Inventor, we're going to need to go ahead and take a look at that block view. So remember during our last activity, we went ahead and already completed our user interface. So the next step is to begin the program. Now, unlike the other activities that we've done, you can see that our block editor has zero code listed in there. So we're going to be building this app from scratch. So what we want to do is basically program this start button down below and what is gonna happen when we click on that start button. So in the block editor, we're gonna go over and find that start button, and we're gonna go ahead and drag out when start button is clicked. Now, when a user touches the start button, what we want to have happen is the germ sprite to move about the screen. But in order to program an image sprite component to move, you need to set the heading, the speed, and the interval properties so before we set these values, it's important that we understand the mechanics of an image sprite in App Inventor. Let's take a look at our heading property. The heading property of an image sprite represents the orientation of that sprite. Think about this as the direction in which the sprite is facing, which is going to be expressed in degrees. It's shown on the compass below how we are starting at the right with zero degrees and moving in a counterclockwise direction until we get back to our full circle, which is 360 degrees. So headings go in a full circle, just like a compass, with values ranging from zero to 360. A sprite that moves towards the right of the screen is said to have a heading of zero degrees. A sprite that moves towards the top of the screen would have a heading of 90 degrees. If we have our image sprite move towards the bottom of the screen, then our heading would then be 270 degrees. The next two properties we need to look at is speed and intervals. So the speed and interval properties of an image sprite work together to determine how fast that sprite moves. The speed determines how many pixels the sprite will move for each time interval set in the interval property. So the interval determines how often the sprite moves in milliseconds. This means that if a speed is set to 10 and an interval is set to 1000, the sprite will move 10 pixels for every one second or 1000 milliseconds in the direction set by the heading property. So what would it mean if the speed is set to 50 and the interval is set to 2000? This would mean that our image sprite would move 50 pixels every two seconds or 2000 milliseconds. Now that we've learned about heading, speed, and interval properties, it's time to begin programming our start button. Now we need to remember that what we want to actually have happen when that start button is clicked, and that's where that we want that germ sprite to kind of randomly bounce around the screen at a specific rate or speed. So in order to do this, we need to set those three properties, the heading, speed, and intervals. In order to do this, we need to locate the germ sprite in our block view and then go ahead and set those properties. So in the block view, I'm gonna find that germ sprite drawer. And when I click on it, I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom until I find my green blocks. Once I find those green blocks, you can see that I have to set the heading. We also have setting the interval and we have setting the speed down below. We're gonna go ahead and bring in that first block that says set germ sprite heading. Now to bring the other two blocks in, we can go back into that germ sprite drawer and pull them in, or we can just go ahead and right click on that germ sprite heading and duplicate and change heading over to speed. Do it again. And this time we're gonna change the speed over to intervals. Once you have all three of your blocks, we're gonna go ahead and put them together and drop them into the event handler. Now you will notice that we still have three errors and that's basically because we haven't completed those lines of code. There's still additional puzzle pieces or parameters that we need to add to those commands. So the first thing we're gonna look at doing is changing the germ sprite speed. We need to drop a number in there which is gonna represent pixels. We're gonna do that by going to our math drawer and scrolling up to the top and bringing in that number zero. 
Once we drop that number zero, you're gonna notice that the command is now complete and we need to change that zero over to the number 15. So what we're basically doing is telling our germ sprite to move 15 pixels for every interval. So now we need to go ahead and program the intervals. So again, I'm gonna to go to the math drawer. I'm gonna drag another number zero in and I'm gonna change that number zero to 10. So what we've done now is we've gone ahead and said, we're gonna move that germ sprite 15 pixels for every 10 milliseconds. So in order to get this to move in a random movement, we're gonna add a new block here. And we're gonna go ahead and find that block under math. And when we get in there, what we're gonna look for is this random integer from. So we're gonna go ahead and drag that in and we're gonna go ahead and put it in that germ sprite heading. Now, what we need to do now is set the heading on how we want that to randomly move. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and change those two values. The first value we're gonna use is gonna be the number 30. So change your one over to 30. And then our second number that we're gonna use is going to be 150. So if we take a look at our compass here, we can see the direction in which we're trying to get that image sprite to move. And that direction is between the numbers of 30 and 150. So now that we have our heading speed and interval programmed, let's see what happens when we actually go ahead and hit that start button. So I'm gonna go up and refresh that app companion and we'll see our germ sprite start back in the beginning of the screen. And when we hit that start button now, what we should basically see is that sprite move about the screen. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that start button. You can see that at first he moved up and then over. So he's moving somewhere in that 30 to 90 degree range. Now he stopped once he reached that top right corner and that's because we don't have the remaining code programmed at this time. We're just telling that sprite what to do when the start button is hit, not what to do once it hits one of the edges. So that will be done at a later time, but for right now, you should have your start button programmed and ready to move on to the reset button. Let's begin by adding the code for our reset button. This is mainly so we don't have to keep editing the properties to refresh the app, or by going ahead and refreshing that app companion to get everything to go back to its original location. Before you program the germ sprite to move to a specific location on the canvas, let's take a closer look at that canvas component. The canvas is basically a grid of pixels. Each pixel location is specified as a pair of X, Y values. X is the number of pixels away from the left edge of the canvas, where Y is the number of pixels away from the top edge of the canvas. If we look at our canvas image below, you'll notice that the origin is set to the upper left-hand corner of our screen. Now that we have a general understanding of how the canvas works, let's go ahead and add some blocks to our program. Once you're back in your MIT App Inventor and your Germ Fighter app is opened up, the first thing we want to do is take a quick look at where our germ sprite is on our canvas before moving over to the block view. We can do this by simply going ahead and clicking on our germ sprite. And here we're going to notice where our X, Y, and Z coordinates are. Right now, my X coordinates are set to 131. My Y is set to 13 and my Z is set to one. Now, if I move that germ sprite around the screen, you're gonna notice that they're gonna change. So again, if I go closer to that upper left-hand corner, my germ sprite's gonna start somewhere around that zero, zero. Here you can see we're set at negative three and negative three for my X, Y, because I'm just slightly off that screen. What we want to have happen is we want this germ sprite to be placed right in the middle of the canvas, as well as a little bit down, right around 30. So if I set that Y axis to 30 and click off of that, you'll see that's about where we want him set up. So again, if we go ahead and take a look at my app companion, you can get a good idea of where that guy should be in the beginning of the screen. Now we do want to move over a little bit and we can adjust that in our block view. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at how we can do that reset button in my block view. So we already have the start button clicked. So the next thing we're gonna to need to go is find that reset button. 
and we're going to pull out when reset button is clicked. Now, when that reset button is clicked, we want that germ sprite not only in the middle of the screen on the X coordinate, but also set at that 30 on the Y. Now, the easiest way to go and do this is we're going to find that germ sprite. And what we're going to look for is one of these purple blocks that is going to allow that germ sprite to move. And what we're looking for is calling that germ sprite to move to the X and the Y coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and drop that guy in. Now, the easy one to do is the Y coordinate because we're going to tell it exactly where we want it to be. So from my math drawer, I'm going to go up to the top and grab another math block. And we're going to go ahead and tell that Y coordinate to be set to 30. Now the X is a little bit harder because depending on the size of the screen that you're using, whether it be a phone or tablet or app companion, that canvas width is constantly going to be changing. So what we're going to do is a little bit of math here to help us to always place it on the correct position. Now we're going to do that by going back into that math block and what we're going to look for is this division block. And what we want to do is basically take the canvas width and divide it in half. We can do that by finding my canvas in my block view. And we're going to go down to these lighter green blocks down at the bottom. And what we're looking for is the canvas one width. So we're going to basically take the canvas one width, which is whatever my width of my canvas is. And from the math drawer, we're going to go back up and grab one of those math blocks and we're going to divide that in half. So we're going to add the number two. Once we have that done, we can put that into the X block. And what we're basically doing is calling that germ sprite to move to the middle of the width on the X axis and then move to the position 30 or 30 pixels down on the Y coordinate. Now, if we go ahead and test our app at this time, we should be able to bring up my app companion. And again, when we hit start, that germ sprite is going to move and he's going to get stuck somewhere on the screen for right now. And that's fine. What should happen now is when we hit that reset button, we should get him to go right in the middle of the screen and 30 pixels down from that top edge. Now you're going to notice that even though I hit that reset button, he did go back to the middle of the actual canvas, but he went right back to that upper right hand corner. And if we go ahead and click on that reset button again, you're going to notice that he's going to keep doing the same thing. So one of the questions asked is why do we think that that's going to happen? What's happening to that germ sprite? And in this case, the sprite moves to that top center, but then it does keep moving in the same direction before the reset. And it's happening for that reason is because the speed and the heading are still set to those values from before the reset. So remember we went ahead and set that speed to 15 and the intervals to 10. Well, once we hit the start button, those values are already assigned to that germ sprite. So even though we hit the reset button, we reset the location, but not the actual speed at this time. The speed should be set to zero and the heading should also be set to zero as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that block view and see how we can adjust that to get him to stop and stay in the center of the screen. What we're going to need to do is just add two more blocks of code to that reset button to get this to really function correctly. So what we're going to go ahead and do is set that speed and interval back down to zero. Now we can do that by going into our start button, right clicking and duplicating the speed. And we're going to change the speed now from 15 down to zero. So now he's not going to be able to move anywhere and the interval, the same thing, duplicate, Let's drag that down and make that 10 changed over to a zero. Once we have those two set to zero, we can go ahead and drop them into the reset button. So now the speed will only be assigned when the start button is clicked. And when we hit the reset button, we should be able to drop him back down to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look. Again, if we hit that start button, he moves to the upper right hand portion of the screen. And now when we hit the reset button, it's going to go ahead and place him down in the middle of the screen. So again, when we hit start, he's going to move around. But now when we put reset, it will put him back in that same spot. So now you have programmed not only your start button, but the reset button as well.